Hi everyone, welcome to episode one of the Bubbles and Berries podcast. Um, this is kind of weird. I'm about to talk to my phone about my knitting, but um, yeah, we'll give this a try. Uh, my name is Ode. I'm coming to you from Edinburgh in Scotland. I live here with my husband and our three cats. Um, we're not from Edinburgh. We've been living here for about three years now. Um, I'm originally from France and he's Canadian, so <laughs> that's that. Um, this is going to be a podcast primarily about knitting. I may talk about sewing every now and then because I like sewing, uh, but not this time. I don't really have any um, sewing project this time. I also will try my best to look into the camera. It's going to be strange. It's probably not going to work all the time, but bear with me. Hopefully I'll improve over time. Um, yeah, what else? Uh, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Bubbles and Berries. I am mostly active on Instagram, not really on Ravelry. I mean, I do, um, I do project pages and I try to add notes and things like that, but yeah, I don't, I kind of use Ravelry more as a tool than as a social thing. Um, yeah, I think that's it for the introduction. If I think of other things, it'll just, um, I'll just say later. Um, yeah, um, so I think there will be four, I'm just, I have notes over there. This is why I'm, which is why I'm looking here. Um, there will be four parts, I think, to the podcast. The first one is finished objects, and then I have three of these. Then works in progress, I also have three. I have some acquisition, and then um, if you follow me on Instagram, uh, you may know that I make project bags. Um, I sew them, and I embroider them, and I sell them on Etsy. And I have a shop update coming up at the end of the week, so uh, at the end of the podcast, I'll talk a little bit about the shop update and show you some of the items that you will be able to find if you're interested. Um, yeah, let's get going. All right, so uh, finished objects. The first one is, I actually finished it back in July, I think. Uh, it's a garment and it's this. It is, I really like it. It came out so nice. I don't think the color, um, comes out right on the phone or on like on the camera right now but even when I was taking pictures for Instagram I was always struggling to get the color right so it is light blue uh, but it's more like warmer and more turquoise almost than it shows right now but um, anyway so this is a pattern called um, the Gan Best I'll, I'll write things at the bottom or somewhere or in the description or something um, it's called the Gan Best by a woman whose first name is Albiona and her last name I'm not even going to try because I don't even know where to start with that word. So um, it is made out of, um, uh, what is it made out of? Oh, of Blacker's yarn. I think I have the bulb in here. Um, I'm trying to be organized. Yes, so it is Blacker's Yarn Tamar Luster Blend DK Yarn. I hope it's not gonna read like the other way around, but we'll see. Um, it is a DK yarn. It is a rustic yarn, uh, non super wash, 100% pure new wool, 220 meters per 100 grams. And the shade is called Shales Brook. I actually bought this off of uh, someone who was doing a de-stash. Um, I originally bought it to make a shawl. She was selling three skeins and then, I don't remember why I ended up not making a shawl, but then I wanted to make this vest and the pattern said um, DK to Aaron weight. So I figured I'd give it a try. And it worked out well. It's a really lovely color. Um, definitely my kind of colors. I like, um, I don't know, I like deep, uh, warm colors. That's usually my, not necessarily warm in like orange or 
browns or things like that but like warm tones so like to me that's a warm blue uh, as opposed to a cool blue if that makes sense i don't know um so yeah uh, what else do i have to say i used about 210 grams to make this um i made it on um Five millimeter. I made it on five millimeter needles for the body, and then three point five for the ribbing. It's it's very nice actually. It's like it's a rib. It's mostly two by two, but then there's a little bit of eyelet detail, which makes it very interesting. It is a really really nice pattern. It's a paid for pattern that you can find on Ravelry. And um, it has lots and lots and lots of options. So I chose to do this body and that kind of hem or like that kind of ribbing all the way around. You can also do it with just a simple two by two rib if you like. There's also, I think, an option to make the um, shoulders a bit larger. So it sort of like flares a bit. I don't know if that makes sense. It sort of flares a bit. There's pictures if you want to um, have a look. And yeah, it's knit um, top down. So um, you can make it as long as you want. I made mine so that the ribbing at the bottom rests around my um, hips, uh, which is the length that I like. Um, yeah. Did I do any other modifications on that? Uh, oh, yes. So I'm a pretty, I'm going to lower this because my arm hurts. Uh, I'm a pretty tight knitter, which means that my gauge is never right. I never, ever hit gauge on any pattern. And a lot of the time, it also means that I need to increase needle size to try and get gauge. But then by the time I get there, the fabric is just too loose and I don't really like it. So um, what I end up doing is that I swatch and with whatever needles feels right until I get the fabric that I like. And then I do a bit of math um, with the pattern to try and make it the size that I want. So what I did for this one is I wanted to make a size two, but because of my gauge, I ended up making a size three that gave me the final dimension of the size two. I don't know if that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. Um, and it worked out just fine. Like it really, it is a little bit larger, like it has a little bit more ease than I thought it would, um, but I'm fine with it. I'm, I really am. Um, I really love it. I can't wait, I can't wait to wear it. To me, um, I tend to wear blues in the winter mostly. I don't know, is this weird? I have a bit of a, um, like I have specific colors that I like to wear um, for specific seasons and to me in winter I like to wear blues like this, I like to wear like grey, silver, uh, dark, like evergreen kind of greens and things like that. That's probably going to be something that I'm going to wear in the winter with a shirt or a blouse, probably a white blouse underneath. I don't actually have one right now in my wardrobe. I think, let me think. I do have one, I do have one, but it doesn't have, it's not like this shirt I'm wearing now, it doesn't have like buttons that I can close all the way to the top. It just has like a V-neck with no buttons. And that means that if I wear this underneath, then this part of the vest is gonna be against my skin. And I have really, really sensitive skin to uh, wool and it's just like, it's too itchy. So, um, what I did actually is uh, when I went to the fabric store the other day, I found a really nice um, cotton, like white cotton poplin or cotton lawn or something like that. And I'm going to try and make a shirt for myself. Um, I've been sewing garments a little bit. I've been making skirts mostly, um, but I don't know. I'll give it a try. We'll see if it works or not. Um, I found a pattern. Uh, by a company called I Am Patterns, I believe. Um, they're a French company, but their patterns are available in English as well. It seems, it, they say it's in, um, an, <clears throat> sorry, an intermediate level, but I don't know. I feel like 
I don't always look at that because I feel like it may be a bit more complicated than uh, my skills at the moment or that what I would feel comfortable doing at the moment. But a lot of the time, if you take your time and uh, do it slowly and there's always, always all the tutorials that you need on YouTube, then in the end, you, uh, you can manage it, no problem. So yeah, so I have the fabric, I have the pattern. Um, I'll try and insert a picture somewhere if I can. Um, and yeah, I'll hopefully maybe in September I'll find a bit of time to do that. The pattern is basically something that will look like the shirt that I'm wearing right now, which I really like wearing that, so it'll be perfect. And my hope is that I can get it just right for me so that I can use it and make loads of shirts um, out of that pattern. I don't tend to knit the same pattern twice except for socks sometimes, um, but knitting, or not knitting, sewing for some reason, if I find a pattern that I really like, I'll just make it over and over and over again, just using different fabrics. So that's what I'm hoping to achieve with this shirt pattern, um, figuring out how it works, make it, and then get it like perfectly sized for me so that I can make it over and over and over again. Um, you will see as we get, go along and maybe in, um, like the next episodes if I keep doing this that I'm not super original when it comes to clothes I like either like black or dark denim trousers and then like white tops and then like nice jumpers of red so yeah I'll make myself all the white tops and I'll make myself all the jumpers um, yeah I think that's it for this pattern really did I mention the needles that I used? I think I mentioned the size, but the needles themselves, I used the Chagu uh, interchangeable needle sets. That's all I have. Um, I have other sizes, including the little mini, uh, mini uh, pouches, the blue and the red. They're perfect for me. I love working with them. Um, I don't really feel the appeal of, like I don't really want to buy other needles. These work just fine for me. Um, I might eventually buy like a wooden set, maybe. I don't really like knitting with wooden needles, but like, you know, when you travel on a plane, sometimes it's like they're kind of okay with wooden needles, but not really metal. So I don't know, it doesn't matter. So that will be um, something to figure out in the future. I'm just seeing on my notes here, one last thing that I've modified on that. It's not really a modification, it's just a, I don't know, matter of taste or something. The pattern says that when you're doing that kind of ribbing, the one with the lace, um, to like really stretch it out when you block it so that it has a bit of like a, a block shape, like a square shape, and the eyelet uh, shows up better. I didn't do that because I kind of like the round shape like this and because this part is right on my hips, it is stretched on my hips anyway. So the lace shows really well when I'm wearing it. So um, yeah, I didn't do that. But I mean, that's the beauty of patterns like this is you can really do whatever you want. So yeah, that's, that's that. That's the gown vest. It's really beautiful. I really, really, really like it and I can't wait to wear it. Um, I will move on to the next one. Let's see if I can put it somewhere without dropping it. All right, uh, next finished object is a hat or a beanie, and it's this. I'm gonna put it on. This is the slouchy beanie by Inga of Knitting Traditions, which, I mean, you know her probably, everyone knows her. She's amazing. Um, I love watching her podcast. It's one of those podcasts that I've watched from the very first episodes and yeah, I love it. And so she released, um, I guess in, in the winter, was it in the winter? A pattern for a hat. And I was looking for a hat pattern that had like nice, or what I find nice, decreases on the top that doesn't make it look weird that just like really stays nice and flat on your head and this one really really does this it's like the decreases are 
like this, like four, um, like across like this. And it means that it just um, stays really nicely on your head. So yeah, there you go. This is what it looks like. It's really, really comfy. The rib, I'm gonna go blind for a minute. The rib is really long, so you can fold it however you want. Like if you want it a bit higher up, that's fine. Then if it's really cold or windy, you can always like roll it down on your ears. And um, yeah, and like I said, like the fit at the top is really good. So what I think I'm gonna do um, is that probably, cause I've, I have a lot of hat patterns in my Ravelries, but I'm always a bit concerned about the top that it just like bunches up like this, which beautiful, just not my, not what I like personally. Um, so I think I might just make some other hats, but use those decreases, you know what I mean? So yeah, let me take it off. And let me show you a bit more. So yeah, it's really kind of like a vanilla hat, I guess, if you want to call this just stocking it in the round and then but what I really love is that the rib is a twisted rib which is really nice I think it makes all the difference like it looks so so pretty and I know a lot of people um don't really like twisted ribs they I mean they like the look but they don't really like knitting it um they find it a bit of a bother or I don't really know I really don't mind it doesn't like once you're in the flow for me it's not uh, it's not a problem uh, it may be because I knit continental so other than the fact that you're just going through the back loop like I don't think the hand movement like you don't have to pay any attention I'm saying that I have no idea how to knit English style so maybe that's the same um, but yeah I really I really like it. I really, really like um, the twisted rib. And I might do this on um, other things that just ask for one by one ribbing and just do a twisted rib. Um, I've actually bought more yarn in another color to make another one of those hats, which now I realized I haven't even told you what the yarn is. So the yarn is, um, a skein of DK yarn, I'm gonna find a ball bin, by my friend Marriott of Edelweiss Fibers. This is what the ball bin looks like. She makes really, really beautiful yarn. She's based uh, right outside of Edinburgh, so very local. This is actually not the right ball bin, but the logo is the same. Um, yeah. And so this one is 100% superwash merino, DK, 200 meters per 100 grams, and the shade is called Autumn Cliché, which, I mean, Autumn Cliché, like, that's, that's the perfect name for this. Uh, I think I used 76, did I use 76 grams? Yeah, 76 grams for it, which is about 152 meters. I have a little bit left over, and I don't really know what I'm going to do with it. But I was thinking the other day, and maybe you can tell me if that would work or not, if you know. Um, I've been thinking that with some of my leftover yarn that's more than like five grams or something, I might try and do like hats for little babies. Because I feel like those wouldn't take very much. And then either that would allow me to use up scraps. And then I can either like gift it for, I don't know, babies in my family or friends or whatever, or like donate it to charity or hospitals or something like that. I feel like that could be a nice way to use um, scraps. So yeah, let me know what you think. Let me know what you do with your scraps. I know a lot of people do granny blankets, like granny square blankets and crochet blankets. Um, I don't really have a need for blankets like these. Um, so I don't really feel um, like I want to make those, even though they're beautiful. Um, so yeah, just let me know what you do with your scraps and maybe that will inspire me to do something new with mine. Um, what else about this hat, this slouchy beanie? I used four millimeter needles, which is a US six. 
Um, I didn't swatch. I usually swatch for most things, not socks, uh, not scarves or shawls. I swatch sometimes if I'm afraid I'm not going to have um, enough yarn, just, just to be sure. Um, I didn't swatch for this one. I, de I did the adult medium and it worked perfectly. Um, it really worked perfectly. Like, it, fits, it fits great. Um, the pattern calls for sport weight or fingering weight yarn. I don't know. I did DK. It worked out. I'm going to keep doing DK because it's really nice and squishy and warmer. I even have some other yarn that I bought to make hats that are fingering weight, but that I think I might just hold double. Um, so yeah, I think that's about it about this pattern. It's really like, I like that it's so simple because it can also like showcase really, really beautiful yarn that you might have, like variegated yarns, speckled yarns, like hand dyed yarns that I feel like you might not want to have a lot of te texture or something like that because both the texture and the, and the yarn coloring would get lost and this is just stuck in it so it can really um, showcase like beautiful, beautiful yarn. And it's a hat so it knits up pretty quickly. Um, yeah, it would also make a really nice um, Christmas present or birthday present or any kind of present really. Um, so yeah, that's that for the hat. Um, the third finished object that I have is a pair of socks. It's a pair of Christmas socks because, you know, it's August. Um, so we're just knitting Christmas socks. And it's this pair. So there you go. Let me see if I can show better. I think the colors are coming across okay. Yeah, so this is my first pair of DK weight socks. Um, I haven't done, I've done a lot of socks. I've never done DK weight. I don't really know why. I, I guess I just, I didn't really know what, how many stitches to cast on and never bothered to look it up on like any patterns because there's plenty of DK sock patterns out there. But recently, like maybe in August or July, K of the Crazy Sock Lady released a DK weight vanilla sock pattern. And I had done her regular fingering weight D uh, vanilla sock before. This is the, part of the pattern that I used to learn to knit. So I learned to knit on that it worked well, so I was like, hmm, if, she's does it, if she does it in DK, I'm sure it'll be fine too. Um, and it was, and it's really nice. I had this beautiful yarn by the Fiber Fox, um, which is a British yarn dyer, English, I believe. I believe. Um, this is the ball band. I really love her logo. It's so cute. And she has the most beautiful yarns. Um, yeah, so the Fiber Fox, and dyed yarn. The name is, or like the colorway is Christmas at Hayes Cottage. It's Merino DK sock yarn, 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon, um, 225 meters per 100 grams. Um, and so it came as a set with the main color being this and then a 20 gram mini for uh, contrast. I originally bought this thinking that it was fingering weight. I bought this a month ago. And then when I received it, I realized that it was DK weight. And I was like, well, what am I gonna do with it now? I didn't know about DK weight or I hadn't thought about DK weight socks back then. And then when I saw this new pattern by the Pretty Sock Lady, I was like, ooh, perfect, I've got the yarn. Um, I wasn't sure originally if a 20 gram mini would be enough for heels and toes. I do, I always do, I always knit my socks um, cuff down. This is what I like. I, and I always do um, a heel flap and gusset and then I do um, a rounded toe. So I don't, I don't do the like, Kitchener stitch toe. It does, it just doesn't fit my foot. So I do, um, 
I do the toe like this where you do decreases every third row and then you just run your yarn at the top, kind of like the top of a hat really. Um, so this is what I do. And so I'd asked on Instagram if people knew or thought that 20 grams would be enough and some people said yes and some people said no. And because more people said yes, I figured I would give it a try. And it was just fine. It was just fine. I did the heel and the toe and I have about five grams left over. So I could have done maybe not like the whole cuff for both socks, but I could have done at least a couple of rows um, at the top. Um, yeah, what else do I have to say? Still looking at my nose. Um, I used 3.5 millimeters, uh, the small circular, the, the nine inch circulars. That's how I did my socks. Um, and so yeah, 3.5 millimeters US 4. I know that in her pattern, K or like indicates or recommends using 3.25, which is what she uses. But my, because my gauge is so, because I'm such a tight knitter, um, I went for 3.5. It's the same for the fingering weight sock. In her pattern, she calls for 2.25 and I always use 2.5. So I figured this would be no different and it, it works just the same. Like it worked really well for me. I think 3.25 would have been a bit too, like they would fit, but then, you know, if they're a bit too small, those stitches are really stretched on top of your foot and it doesn't look so nice. Um, so yeah, I don't know that I have anything else to say. Um, yeah, like I said, heel flap and gusset. I do this, um, I always do a little like garter stitch edging to the heel flap. Um, I saw this on a podcast, like an, an older episode of the, of the Gentle Knitter podcast, um, Nicole. And um, she was showing how she did that, and she was saying, among other things, that it made picking up the stitches uh, easier. And it really does. I mean, it does for me anyway, especially when I started knitting socks and I had to pick up the stitches, and it was just like a sort of straight, normal, like slip stitch edge or stock knit edge. And I couldn't, I couldn't pick up the stitches in a way that looked nice. Like it made little holes and it was a bit regular and I really didn't like it. And so then I saw her podcast and I was like, this is genius. And so now I'm doing this for all my socks. Although the other day when I was knitting another pair of socks, I completely forgot. And so I ended up with just like a, an edge of stock in it. And I picked up the stitches and they looked amazing. So I think I've improved, <laughs> but I still, I still really like to do the little garter stitch um, edge here. Um, I usually, I did three stitches, which is what I do on fingering weight yarn usually. I think for DK it's a bit too much and I'll show you in my um, um, works in progress. I'm doing another pair and in, of DK socks and I've only done two uh, stitches for the garter stitch edge and I think it looks better, but yeah. I haven't really tried the other kinds of heels, um, I think I should. These just fit me really nicely and it's also the way my grandmother used to knit socks and I only learned to knit fairly recently um, and like my grandmother, my two grandmothers actually, they were both knitting but on my mom's side she was knitting all the time and she was making all the socks and she was so fast and um, she passed away in 2018 and I learned to knit after that so she never got to teach me, I guess. I wasn't, I guess I wasn't interested at the time. Um, I taught myself to knit. And I don't know, maybe it's silly, but like knitting socks the way she did, so with the heel flap and gusset and the rounded toes, I don't know. It feels a little bit like I'm knitting with her in a way. I don't know, it's kind of silly, but this is why I like doing this. Um, I'll try other heels eventually and I'm sure they'll fit, they'll fit fine, but yeah, it's like I'm knitting with my grandmother. Um, yeah, so that's the socks. Oh yeah, and I did a size medium. This is what I always do. Um, 
So three patterns, so I guess I can, I can mention that. It's the size medium is uh, 48 stitches around, and when I do fingering weight, I do 64, and it works for me. Um, I've never done like size small or like less than 48 or 64, or sometimes I've done like 60 stitches because it has a pattern that needs to be a multiple of whatever, and 60 is what works, but less than that, I don't really do because it's too tight or like too narrow, I guess. And then larger than that, um, I do it when I make socks for my husband because he has, he has big feet. He's a size, a UK size 14. I think it's like a Canada size 15. And it's just like, yeah, I need to do 72 stitches and a fingering weight for him. Um, and it takes forever. And it feels like I'm knitting a sleeve because that's how long his feet are. Um, but, you know, I still make him socks. Or I make them one pair, and but I'll make more. Uh, all right, so that's, that's all for the finished objects. Um, I guess we'll move on to, what are we gonna move on to? We're gonna move on to works in progress. Works in progress, I can speak. Um, all right, so like I said, I was doing another pair of DK socks. Uh, and these, uh, this is a pair that I'm making for a friend. Her birthday was last week, but I haven't seen her yet. And I think I'll see her at the end of this week. So, um, I think they'll be finished. I have, well, I'm using like, I have two bags because I have one sock in, um, each bag, but not because they couldn't fit in one bag, just because I've been taking them with me and I don't need to take two socks with me. Um, one or the other is fine. These are two of the bags that I make and that I sell in my Etsy shop. I'll, just, I'll show you in more detail at, at the end, but this is what they look like. They're hand embroidered um, by me. And yeah, so um, I guess I'll just show you one of them because they're kind of the same. So this is what they look like. So I'm using a yarn by the Camel's Yarn, the lovely Hannah, um, who was based in Cornwall in the UK. And this is what it looks like. Um, it's really beautiful. It's um, her finger, um, fingering sock yarn, her basic sock, sock yarn, 2575. And this shade is uh, called Turmeric Latte. So this is the skein and this is what it looks like knitting up, knit it up. So yeah. Yeah, I think that's more true to color. It's like a really warm gold. It looks like turmeric latte really, uh, with like speckles of brown, um, like dark brown, light brown. And yeah, it's really, really lovely. So yeah, that's the basic vanilla DK weight sock. Uh, I do 10 rounds of two by two ribbing for the cuff then 30 rounds of stockinette, then in the round, then heel flap and gusset, and then going down towards the toe. Um, I think she's a size six, so that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, for me, for the Christmas socks that I showed earlier, I'm a si I'm UK size uh, six and a half, and I think I ended up from like, from the top of um, the gusset, I guess, uh, to before I start the toe, I think I ended up doing 58 rows so um, I think I'll do a little bit less than that but not much I'm actually I should have brought this with me I'm gonna give me a second I actually have this which is brilliant i bought this from a shop called yarn works it's in the uk although you probably can find something similar in other countries and it's a it's kind of like a sock blocker although i don't use it because it's just wood and it's not um like there's no coating or anything but it has a ruler and that's just brilliant because you can um either you use uk sizes and then it tells you the length in centimeter or you use another kind of um, system, like size system, but then you can always look it up online and they tell you um, how long the foot is for this, for this size. And so you can adjust 
this by like pulling it or bringing it in, I guess. Measure from here to here, making sure you have the length of your foot and then you just put on the sock and then see where it fits. So I've actually drawn here in pencil a line, which is when I know to start my toe. So my toe is always this. And so yeah, I knit and then up until I get here and then I do the toe. And that means that um, if you're knitting socks for other people um, and you know their shoe size, then you can be pretty sure that your socks are gonna fit. I've tried it for my sister, I've made her socks for my mom, uh, and we're not the same uh, shoe size and it, it, it worked perfectly for them. So, um, you know, when the person is not around for them to try it on, um, really, really handy. So I really, really like this by Yarn Works. I'll try and link everything below if you're interested or just, just as a reference. Um, so yeah, so yeah, those, um, where did I put it here? So yeah, those are DK socks. Um, I'm nearly done with this one. The other one I'm like to here maybe. I like to knit my socks in, I guess it's called in tandem or something. I don't knit them two at a time. I always do the small circulars, but I, I knit them sort of together. So I'm gonna do uh, the cuff on one and then the cuff on the other, then the leg and the leg and the heel and the heel, foot and foot and etc. And so that usually by the end, um, when I finish one, I only have the toe on the other to do. Um, and so that way there's no second sock syndrome situation or nothing like that. It works really well for me. Uh, I like doing it that way. Uh, it's also nice because like knitting stock knit in the round, I don't need to focus on it at all. But then when I get to the heel or the toe, I need a little bit of attention just so that I don't miss a decrease or something. So that means that like if on one sock I have to do the heel, um, but I can't because I'm out and about or watching TV or whatever and I don't want to have to focus on something that usually the other sock I can do a bit of uh, stock in it. So it works, it works out well for me. So yeah, I'm gonna finish those um, tomorrow or Wednesday or something like that and then give them to her when I see her and hopefully she likes them. I'm always a bit nervous. Um, gifting hand knits to other people because especially when it's not something they've asked for it's a bit of like a surprise present or something and yeah i'm always worried that they're not gonna like it which is really silly because they always do and i know that i would always be so happy and appreciate a gift so much but i don't know i'm just silly and i I was afraid that they're not going to like it. Anywho. Uh, second finished object, um, not finished object, work in progress, is there's actually not much to show. Um, it's a test knit that I'm doing. It's my very first test knit, so I'm very excited. It's a new pattern called the Taitos, Taitos. I don't really know how to pronounce it. I'll write it somewhere. Uh, socks by the lovely Anina of Ani Yure Knits. Uh, she has a podcast and I will link it down below. She's also on Instagram and I think she's fairly new at designing, but she's busy. Like she has a sock pattern that is now up for testing. I think she also has a hat. I think she may have mittens. I'm not really sure. I think she lives in Finland. And so she had this pattern, I'll, I'll put a picture. Um, and she was looking for testers. And so I asked if I could test it and she said yes. And so yeah, I'm testing the smallest size, but right now I only have, I only have the cuffs down, uh, uh, the cuffs done. Jeez, I'm sorry, English is not my first language. And sometimes when I get tired, I forget words or I forget how to pronounce them. So yeah, this is what the cuffs look like. Um, I always have, I need to weave, in that, to weave that end. I always have my ends on really tiny um, clothes, 
pins, I guess, just so they don't dangle everywhere and get um, tangled and all of this. But yeah, it's just, just the cuffs right now. Uh, I'll get back to those once I finish the yellow socks that are a gift. Uh, the yarn is really, really pretty. Uh, it is, oh, it's a mess. It is this yarn, which I guess is really, yeah, it's coming out well on the screen. Um, it is one of my all-time favorite uh, sock yarn, like solid color, or like nearly solid color um, yarn for socks. And it is called, it is the Coop Knits Sock Yeah um, by Fiber Space, I guess, or like they sell it. Um, it is 75% fine superwash merino wool and 25% nylon. Um, they come, it comes in skeins of 50 grams and 212 meters per 50 grams, 231 yards. Um, yeah, I do many, many socks in that. They have a lot of beautiful colors. The one I'm using right now, the that purple, dark, dark purple color is called uh, one, one, two, Sugilite, Sugilite. They're named, most of their, the colorways are named after crystals, like quartz and things like that. But I, I, don't, I don't know how to pronounce it. I'll, I'll write it and then you can say it properly. Um, yeah, so it's really fun. Really, I, I really like it. It's quite, it's more of a light fingering weight. Um, than a lot of other yarns, but it's really lovely. Um, I really like it. I'm knitting it on 2.5 millimeters needles. So uh, I think it's one and a half US, uh, nine inch circulars, uh, the usual way. And I'm doing the size uh, small. I think we have until mid September to test it, or at least like, make the first sock and test it. And, but then I don't know exactly when she plans to release the pattern but i'll put all her info uh, below and you can always follow her on instagram and i'm sure she'll announce everything there and i am storing this into one of my larger project bags that i made and that i sell on etsy with little scottish uh, flowers embroidered on them a thistle and some heather and some cow parsley um yeah that's my second work in progress. Like I said, not much to show yet, but hopefully next time I will have more done. And then my third finished object is um, it's a hat or a scarf, like a white scarf, not a shawl, but a white scarf. And it's, it's by Kate Davies, Kate Davies Design, and it's called, I think, Dunve. Maybe that's how you say that word. I'll write it. I don't know. Um, it's really, really nice. Um, I'm keeping it in yet another one of my bags. Um, this, one is, this one is called Summer Bouquet, um, like lavender and poppy and all of this. And uh, this is what I have so far. So I've been working on this for a little while already. It's just a bit slow going, but I don't mind. I really enjoy it. Um, and so this is what I'm going to hide behind it, but this is what it looks like. Um, it's basically... Um, so you start here and you do some increases for a while uh, so that the, the end is like pointy, triangle, and then you go rectangular basically up until the end. So the other end is not... Uh, doesn't end in a point like this. Uh, although I've seen on Instagram, on, not on Instagram, on Ravelry, some people who just did the same thing but with decreases on the other on the other end, so it matched. But I think I'll just I'll just do it um, as is. Um, you alternate. It's like you have one band um, of like you have bands of stock in it, just plain stock in it stitch, and then bands of like a knit pearl. Um, motif I guess it's two different kinds there's this one and this one and then you repeat all the way along like first this and then stuck in it and then this and then stuck in it and then you go back and it's really nice because the the bands here are quite short so um 
it's really fun because you need a bit of attention to do the ones that have a pattern to it and then and then you can chill and do the one that are just stuck in it um so yeah it's really fun um i'm knitting this on uh what is this always the chai goo because that's what i love uh three mil no not three millimeters what 3.5 millimeters us4 i actually have one that's 3.5 and then one that's three because my purling tension is not the same as my knitting tension. So if I do, if I use the same needles on both sides, uh, it shows it's not um, very regular. But if I use, if I go down one side on the needle that's gonna get the purl stitches onto it, then it's even. So that's what I do. Um, yeah, what else do I have to say? Uh, the yarn, the yarn, uh, the yarn is another one of um, Edelweiss fiber yarn. Uh, my friend married it, and it looks like this, and it's so pretty. I bought two skeins. I originally bought. I originally bought it to make another shawl, but I don't know. It didn't work out. So I'm using it for this now, and it's really, really nice, really soft. And let me get the ball band. So again, that's her the logo. Really nice. And this one is Merino Linen Singles. Fingering weight, 90% superwash merino, 10% linen, 360 meters per 100 grams. And the shade is Bracken. Um, I really like her yarn. She does a lot of tonal or semi-solid yarns, which I find that you don't find that often in indie dyers. Uh, you find a lot of variegated and a lot of speckled yarn, which is beautiful. But I also, I really like solids and semi-solids. So I tend to, um, I really like her yarn. Uh, and I will buy more because I love it. Um, so yeah, so that's the yarn. I bought two skeins. Um, it is fingering weight and the pattern for the, for the scarf called for sport or DK. Um, so obviously my gauge um, is completely off. Like it's already off anyway all the time. Even if I used to make the right yarn, but now I'm using thinner yarn. But I don't I don't really care. Like this is to me, this is wide wide enough. And then um, uh, and then what I plan to do is to just knit until I run out of yarn basically because you just really keep going like this. You don't have to worry about all, any of the edging here. It's really nice because the pattern, the way you uh, knit, it automatically, uh, not automatically, but it creates um, like an I-cord edge as you go along the side. And then you just go to uh, wherever you want it to stop and then you just do an I-cord edging um, at the end. So the I-cord edging is just over like that width, I guess. Maybe if I show it the right way, that would be nicer. Um, so yeah, I think it will be, it. I mean, I don't think, I know um, that it will be narrower than what the pattern says, but it might be, um, might be longer. Uh, I'm almost, almost done with the first skein right now. And I'll start the second skein and then, yeah, I'll just knit until I'm out of yarn, which is nice because, I mean, it's not a big deal to have left over, but I never know what to do with them. So if I can use um, all the yarn, then I'm happy. Uh, yeah, was there anything else that I was wanting to say? Uh, no, not really. I really like Kate Davis's patterns. They're so nice. And I think she's Scottish, or I mean, her her patterns are heavily inspired by Scotland, which is where I live, and so I really like that. And um, yeah, I want to knit them all, so maybe one day I will knit them all. But that's definitely not the last Kate Davis pattern that I knit. Um, yeah, I don't do. Well, I I haven't done a lot of color work yet, although I really like it. But she has a lot of fair isle designs and patterns and I really love that so um, 
I think I'm going to start getting on that uh, very soon. All right, so that's it. I think that is it for my works in progress. I don't know that the scarf will be done the next time I podcast. I think it's going to be a bit of a slow project, which I'm, I'm really happy about. Although I would like to um, finish it sooner than later, uh, rather than later, because I kind of want to be able to wear it in the fall. That kind of green is definitely a fall color for me, not as much of a winter color. Um, so we'll see, we'll see. Um, yeah, what next? This is going to be a very long podcast for a first one. Um, yeah, and I hope someone watches because otherwise I've been showing my phone all my knits and that is weird. I guess we'll move on to acquisition. I actually have four things. I don't, it's a bit of an exception for me. I don't usually buy that much yarn, um, but stuff happened. And this month I did. The first one is uh, yarn that I had on my wish list for a very, very long time. And I finally bought some and it's, it's amazing. And that's, that's what it is. It's a cone uh, of Jameson and Smith of Shetland, Shetland wool, 100%. And it's a 500 gram cone and look at those colors. I don't tell if the phone shows, I think it does. It's so, so nice. It's, it's got all the colors of autumn really. Like I'm gonna make an autumn, like a jumper for the autumn season. And yeah, it's just perfect. It's got, um, it's got some orange and some green and some dark red and I love it. Also, it smells like I'm, I'm carrying a sheep because it smells so good. Like I'm holding a sheep in my arms, which I would like to do um, sometime, but I think that would be a bit too big for me. Anyway, just rambling, just waffling right now. Um, yes, so 500 gram cone of Jameson and Smith, uh, Shetland wool, it's their jumper weight yarn, which they say on the website knits up kind of like a fingering weight. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a swatch anyway and see how it behaves because with cones, um, usually it, they, they still have a bit of spinning oil in it and so they need to be rinsed quite a bit and they bloom a bit differently. Um, so I just want to do a swatch and uh, see what kind of fabric I get and what kind of fabric I like. The shade is called, they have numbers for their shade. The shade is called, is numbered 1285. They have lots of them, all of their colors. I mean, you know Jameson and Smith, they, they make yarn for color work, uh, fair isle things. And so they have a ton of colors and they don't always have all the colors, all the colorways available as a cone, but they have many of them. And it's just, it's a fraction of the price of the cost. If you were to buy the same quantity in little skeins, especially then like the balls that they sell are 25 grams. So to make a jumper, like a single color jumper, you would need to buy a lot of them. It would be a lot of ends to weave in. And uh, yeah, I think I paid 40 pounds plus shipping, which is not very expensive because Shetland is in Scotland, I'm in Scotland, so it's domestic shipping for me. I know they ship abroad and it's a bit more expensive, but you know, that's, you know, you live in another country, so shipping is more expensive. That's just how it works. Um, so yeah, like 40 pounds for 500 grams of yarn that is way more than I need for a jumper. And I'm really excited to start using it. I'm going to start knitting on with this once I'm done with the yellow socks that I was showing you earlier. And I plan to make the Lento, I think it's called the Lento jumper from the latest issue of Lena magazine. Um, let me grab it for you. So it's this one. It's issue number 11. I know they have number 12 coming out in September which looks really nice, number 12. I think the, the theme was like unisex or 
gender neutral or something like that. And I've seen a few, like they've started posting a few pictures of the patterns that are in it and they look really nice. So I might get it. I'm not subscribed to Lina magazine. Um, I just like to wait and see what the patterns are and if I like it, but let me see. I have two of these and then I have, I don't know if you can see in the back here, I have 50 weeks of, 52 weeks of socks, 52 weeks of shawls. Maybe I should just get a subscription. Anyway, uh, the patterns that I'm talking about is this one. It's called the, um, the Lento Jumper. It's by someone called Jonah Hytella. Hi I will put it here. Maybe you can read it. Um, she's a staff member. She's the editor-in-chief. Uh, and yeah, it's basically a vanilla ra uh, raglan sweater. Um, and it looks very beautiful and stuck in it and easy to make. So I'm going to make it. Um, I'm going to make it and hopefully I get to wear it a bit uh, this fall. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. This, there's some really nice patterns in there and this yarn is amazing. I can't wait to swatch. I can't wait to see how it behaves in the wash, how it blooms. I really like, I'm not, I'm not either full on um, in, indie dyed yarn or full on like rustic yarn. I like a bit of both and I like, I like rustic yarns for garments. I find that like jumpers and things like that. I find that, I don't know, I just like it. I find it a bit warmer. I find that it holds its shape better. But then when it comes to hats and scarves and shawls and socks, then a lot of the time I'm going to be drawn towards indie dyed yarn. Also, because like I said before, my skin is very sensitive. And so usually getting merino and superwash is soft enough for me to wear directly on my skin. So this is sort of um, how I choose my yarn, I guess. So yeah, that was the first acquisition. The second acquisition is something that I got on a D-stash as well. It's blacker yarn. So it's the same yarn that I used for my vest, or the same company that I used for my vest, except that it's in this color, which I think comes out okay on the phone. Um, it's really nice. It's so beautiful. It's a really dark, deep teal. And um, I bought this off of someone who was destashing. And I got um, 473 grams. So they, they were selling four full skeins and then part of another skein. It is worst, uh, no, worsted weight? No, Aaron weight 200 meters or 219 yards per 100 grams. 92% pure Mimi wool, 8% alpaca. And it is called Tor. Tor. And they don't really have a, a colorway name. Uh, it just says 13th birthday Tor. So I'm guessing it was maybe a limited edition, um, like a special, special yarn, special colorway. It smells so cheapy. Are you like are you the kind of person who goes into your yarn shop and just sniffs everything? I do this in yarn shop and I do this in bookshops. And I know I'm not the only one. Um yeah, so that is let me see. Um yeah, Aaron weight and I have four hundred and seventy-three grams, so um a little bit over nine hundred meters. Um, and I don't know yet what I'm going to do. I have ideas. One of them is called the Brick Jumper by Claire Lee. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. It also seems to be like a, like a vanilla raglan jumper, but with a bit of a longer rib or ribbed hem at the bottom. Uh, it's really nice. I'm going to put a picture. Um, I really like it. I also really like the... Um, Songbird sweater by Knit Sisu, S I S U. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm really sorry. Um, and 
yeah, I really like this one. I'll put a picture here. Um, I really, really like it. So I think I might, I might do this. I might make this one. Uh, but do let me know if you have any ideas of um, jumper or a garment pattern for Erin Waite yarn. Um, I'll, I'll open to suggestion. Um, yeah, I might wear this. I might not wear this. I might knit this uh, later this fall in like November, maybe even December in early winter, because that's definitely a winter color for me. Um, yeah, I can't wait. I love, I love, I always look up on Ravelry or Instagram or Etsy sometimes for D-Stash, because you can find the most beautiful thing at a lower price and, you know, always happy to Take yarn off of your hands so um you know i'm helping i have quite a bit of yarn actually uh, look at here because i have a yarn wall i have like a pegboard and i hang all my skeins there and i have quite a few that are just from d stash and why not really so yeah so that's acquisition number two acquisition number three is these babies they're so pretty the color is the most beautiful color that I've ever seen. It's a uh, stranded dye works. The lovely Amy, who has a podcast, who lives in Scotland too, I think in five, so just across the bridge from, from me. Um, yeah, so Amy, of I think it's called the Stranded Podcast, or the Stranded Dye Works Podcast. I watch it all the time. She has such great energy. She's really funny. Um, I really, really like it. And she has a cat. Um, she doesn't have a cat. She her neighbor's cat comes into her house all the time and she calls her not my cat and it's hilarious. I love it. Anyway, so this is yarn that I saw. She was talking about it, not her latest podcast, but the one before. And I was like, I need this because this brown is beautiful. It's called Coffee Bean and this is exactly what it is. Like, do you know those commercials for, um, for, I don't know, Nespresso or coffee or whatever, and then they have this slow, slowly falling bean of coffee that looks almost gold and they have some like sexy music in the background and all this. This is what this is what the colorway is. Um, so coffee bean and it's so nice and it's the kind of yarn that if you put in the sunlight, it shines or shimmers or I don't know how to say that. It looks kind of gold and then it has a dark brown halo. I love it. Um, I'm gonna make with this. So this is two skeins of 100% superwash merino DK, 230 meters per 115 grams. And I am, I bought it with a project in mind. I'm gonna use one to make another one of the hats that I was showing her earlier. And then, the other one and whatever is left over of the first one, I'm going to make a cowl to match. Um, I just don't know what cowl to make. Um, I need to find the perfect cowl pattern for me. Uh, an issue that I have with a lot of cowls is that they're a bit too loose. And so I feel like they're not keeping the cold away in a way. Like I feel like if I want a cowl, I kind of want it like a scarf that I can really wrap it up here. And, and be warm um, so yeah I need to find I need to find a pattern that I like and yeah once again if you have any ideas let me know in, in the comments below um, that would be really helpful but yeah I'll keep you posted this is such a beautiful colorway and I went on her website like five minutes before the shop update and I was refreshing 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 the page and then the second it came on, up on for sale I bought two skeins and I think she only had three available at the time and I checked out and that was it it took 30 seconds but I know she sells out really fast and I really didn't want to miss out and I know I or I know I think that she's making some more for her next shop update um so yeah if you want some you might want to get on it um, is that all I have to say about this one? 
Yes, it is. And then last but not least, um, the last acquisition, which again is a bit like, I don't, I don't buy all that yarn usually, but I don't know, August stuff happened, um, is this. And this is gorgeous. And I wish, I wish you could smell through the camera. It smells so sheepy, sheepy but like almost like buttery, if that makes sense. I was trying to describe it to my husband and I say, I said that it smelt of sheep scented butter, which makes no sense. And he looked at me weird, uh, but that's what it smells like. And I think if you're a knitter, I think you understand. Um, there's a bit of a story behind this yarn. So mid, um, mid August, my husband and I went for a little vacation on the west coast of Scotland. And one of the days we took a boat and went into um, to some of the islands. So I don't know if you're not familiar with the geography of Scotland, basically you have main, mainland Scotland and then the most of the west coast is a ton of islands, big and small, tons and tons and tons of them. And it's beautiful. It's the most beautiful place ever. I have some footage, I might try and put it at the end, but it's just gorgeous. And then one of the islands that we went to is called Iona. It's a, it's a small island. They have a quite famous um, abbey or cathedral, no, an, an abbey, I think. And um, they have, like the sand around the island is white for some reason. And so it makes the sea so blue you would think that you're in the tropics somewhere which you're not you're in the west coast of scotland and it's not warm as if you were in the tropics but it looks that way anyway and on that island they have a few sheep like many places in scotland the sheep are just roaming free um, doing whatever they want and so they have some sheep and so they make some yarn out of those sheep they have several breeds and so the yarn comes um, in a bit of a gray mauve mauve gray kind of uh, color and so yeah so that's called iona wool it says 100 percent single origin 100 percent single origin iona yarn and it's the blend of all the sheep that they have uh, on the island so like i said they have several uh, several different breeds so some of them are white or like sheep white i guess and some of them are, are darker um, gray, which is why um, the yarn is kind of light gray. Is there undyed one, this one? They also have it dyed in, I think they have like a dark pink and a yellow and a green and a blue. They don't have a million different colors, but, and they have a cream, I think, like a sort of natural color, but it is, I don't think it's dyed. I think they just don't mix the gray sheep into it, the gray sheep wool into that. But I got this one called, it's called silver, but it's it's undyed. And um, yeah, I, I will link the, their website. It's, it's from the Iona craft shop, but they have a website and I think, I know they deliver to the UK and I'm, I'm pretty sure they deliver internationally as well. Um, so I'll link to the website uh, below. I got DK weight. They have all the weights up until bulky I think maybe um, so I got DK weight and you get 240 gram uh, 240 meters per hundred gram which is not bad really um, so yeah I don't know what I'm gonna do with it yet I have had a bit of a look on uh, Ravelry I'm not gonna make a hat or a scarf or something because it's very rustic yarn very rustic wool and like I said it's just I'm not going to be able to wear it it's going to be too itchy so I'm going to make a garment and I'm going to make a vest because I only have two skeins but I think that should be enough for me uh, one that I have in mind is called the vest number two spring edition by my favorite things knitwear I'll post a picture um, it's very simple v-neck vest which I really like but yeah, um, again, if you have any vest idea, pattern ideas for DK yarn, um, let me know. Um, 
One really cool thing too about this shop is that they also, just like Jameson and Smith, they also sell the yarn by the cone. So 500 gram cone, um, which you can also order, uh, which I'm going to order. I didn't buy it at the time. I was really tempted and then I was trying to be reasonable. So I bought two skeins, but because I know that they deliver to the UK, um, I will definitely order a cone of either the same DK gray one or maybe a fingering weight gray one. Um, yeah, I'll see. I love it when places sell yarn on the cone because you can get so much and the value is so good. And for me anyway, I'm not, I'm not very big. Um, so 500 grams is usually more than enough for a garment for me. I know like maybe bigger sizes, it, it's not enough, but um, for me it is. So um, it's, it's really nice. So yeah, that's the yarn. I love it. I have it in, I'm currently filming in my home study. I, I work from home all the time. I'm a, a translator and I translate knitting patterns among other things and so whether there's covid or not i work from home and so i'm in my office right now and i have yarn everywhere basically and my office smells like a sheep and i'm very happy about it um yeah that's it for the yarn and that's it for the acquisition and my phone says it's been an hour and 10 minutes so yeah, I'm still going to talk about my shop update, um, feel free to skip, uh, I'll try anyway, I mean, like, maybe it's too late for me to say that now, but um, I'll try and put timestamps if I can figure out how to do that so that you can just skip to whatever you're interested in. But yeah, shop update then. And then I will, I will wrap up. Uh, so like I said before, um, I have a shop on Etsy called Bubbles and Berries. I will put a link below um, and I make project bags and I make project bags like this. So basically they're, uh, they're made out of linen and they have a cotton lining. Um, they're all the same linen and then I embroider them with different designs. I've created those designs myself, I've drawn them, and then I've embroidered them. Um, and yeah, so I have two sizes. Um, this is the, the medium size, and then this is the small size. So you can get a sense. The small size is great for like one skein projects. So I use it for socks. Um, when I was making the orange slouchy beanie, I was using that. Um, it's, it's great for that. And then the medium size is good for two to three skeins. Uh, I used one when I was making my bloom vest that I showed at the beginning. I think it would be too small for a jumper, even for me when I make the smaller sizes, but like shawls or small garment, kids garment, probably baby, baby things, um, they would be great. And I have four designs are going to be available in the next shop update, which is going to be this coming Friday, the 3rd of September at 5 p.m. British summertime. And these four designs are this one, which is called Summer Bouquet. And it has lavender, poppy, poppy flowers, and then some like, you know those tall grasses that you see sometimes? They're very flowy in the winds. I really love them. And then a little, like, a little bumblebee. So that's Summer Bouquet. I also have this one. All the designs are available in all in those two sizes. So I'm showing you the samples I have, but like, um, this is a, a, a medium, but if you want a small, you can, have it, you can have it on a small, it's fine. This is the second design. It's called Scottish Wildflower inspired by the flowers basically outside my door. Uh, so you have a thistle, heather in pink, and cow parsley. Um, this one has been actually really successful. People seem to really like this. Um, so that's Scottish wildflower. 
Then I have bumblebee, little beehive, some flowers, and then some little bees happily zooming around with bumblebee. I embroidered them all myself. Uh, and the way it works is that um, I do a shop update at the beginning of the month. Um, I leave it on for about a week, although usually uh, the past couple of months it's sold out in a couple of days, which is wonderful. Like, thank you so much if you've purchased from my shop before. It really, really means a lot. Um, and then once uh, the orders are in, I embroider them and then I ship them at the end of the month. Um, so yeah, so if you order like at the end of this week, so the 3rd of September, then I will ship them at the end of September and then you'll get them in however long it takes to get to your country. So in the UK, it's usually just a few days. Uh, North America, it's a couple of weeks. Europe, who knows, <laughs> Brexit. Uh, it can be a week, it can be two weeks. Um, and yeah, that's, that's how it works. That way I can make sure to make the ones that you want, you know? Um, anyway, so that was three designs. The fourth design that I have is this, these little sheep. Um, call them um, Maisie and Daisy. So this is Maisie and this is Daisy with a little butterfly. Um, it's got little um, knot stitches to make them look all fluffy. That's Maisie and Daisy. And then I have a brand new design that I've just made yesterday that will be hitting the shop for the first time. And it's called, just like I had Summer Bouquet before, this is called Autumn Bouquet. And so like some fall colors uh, and, and flowers uh, as like once again inspired by what is basically outside my window. I live on um, near a really big natural park. So uh, there's lots of flowers and wilderness. So it's really nice. So yeah, that's Autumn Bouquet. Um, this one is a medium size, but again, I can make it in a small size. That's completely fine. And then all the bags have my little tag. It's a little wooden tag that I get from a little Etsy shop um, that engraves them for me, uh, which is nice too, because like when you buy from my shop, you're not only supporting my shop, but you're also supporting the tags I get from another Etsy shop, uh, the cord I get from another Etsy shop, and then the fabric I get from my local fabric store. So it's all small business and local. And yeah, like I said, it's linen, um, like natural colored linen with cotton on the inside. And it has a bit of interfacing, which fusible interfacing, which means that it is a little bit rigid, but not like not super stiff. So you can still like, you can still fold it around. It has a round base, so it, it's, it sits really well and you can fold it around like a bucket. It's going to stay up straight when you knit, but it's not super stiff. You can um, definitely like fold it. It's just fine. Or like um, pull on the drawstring is fine. And then yeah, fold it. Like, it's completely fine. So yeah, that's, that's me. That's my, that's my bags. Um, and the next shop update is this Friday. So if you're interested, um, you can set a little reminder. I'll, I'll put it up. I'll put everything up on Instagram anyway, if you don't follow me there um, and would like to do so. That's where I post most of the information. Um, <coughs> sorry. And yeah, I think that's it. I recorded a podcast, guys. Um, and I'm, I'm going to try to edit it and that's, that's going to be fun. Um, listening to myself. Ooh. Um, yeah, I don't have anything else to say. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, feel free to subscribe, uh, like, uh, leave a comment below. I hope the lighting was okay. I hope the sound was okay. Um, it, it will improve over time. Um, I don't know when I will record next. I think it will be a bit of a monthly, like once a month affair. I, I honestly don't knit fast enough and wouldn't have the time to record more often than that. And I kind of like the idea of 
you know, at the end of the month, doing the podcast and looking back on what I've did this month and what my plans are for next month. And yeah, but I'll keep you posted. Um, you'll see it here if you subscribe or um, on Instagram too. So yeah, I'm going to stop waffling now. I'm going to say thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for buying my bags if you have in the past. Thank you. Thank you so much for um, your likes and comments over on Instagram. They really mean it. They mean a lot and I've gotten to chat with so many lovely people. This knitting community is just blows my mind. Everyone is so nice and so supportive and it's great. Like it's like a big international family and I love it. Um, so yeah, thank you. I will see you next time. And until then, happy knitting. Bye.